Okay, so good evening, Suyapa. Dinora. Good evening, teacher. <laughs> no problem. You can say me Suyapa too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, but thank you. I, thank you. I was not sure how to say it. I wasn't sure if uh, you prefer to be called Dinora because most of the times I just tell you Dinora. So I, I didn't want to say something wrong. <laughs> Okay, no problem. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, uh, Dinora. Thank you for being on time and welcome, Jonathan. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you for coming. Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? It's nice to see you again. Very, very good, guys. Thank you for coming. I'm happy to see you again. Hope you guys are doing fine. Jonathan, all right. Very good. I understand. No problem. Thank you for letting me know, Jonathan. Jacqueline, how are you? How's your day going? Very tired. I feel very tired. And I can wait for tomorrow at 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I know that feeling. Yes, I feel just the same. I don't know why, but uh, I, I feel like my week has been very long. I just uh, wish that it were Friday, just like you said. I wish it was mm -hmm. Friday already because I'm really tired. For, I don't know why. For me, it has been a hectic week. Uh, I'm in a high season at this moment. Yeah, right. And I have a lot of things to do. I like, know. Yeah, because of what you told me the last time, 50 to 60 right? reviews. Uh, it's really, I, I have my mind like, Ugh. I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. It, it feels like uh, like your brain or uh, your head is heavy like heavy, you don't yes. have any strength i know exactly what you mean like the red queen like with the big head right i know exactly what you mean yeah you told me that before that you work for this company uh, with gift cards yes and you are like in this high season mm -hmm. so okay i understand well very good jacqueline hopefully <laughs> uh well, the week is about to end, so hopefully you can have some rest during the weekend. Maybe you I can hope. just relax. <laughs> yeah, I hopefully. Hope. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, yeah. Because, you I know... I accept invitations to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good, yes. I think that we should all go to the beach. Maybe yes. the rest of the class, maybe they want to go to the beach and we can maybe go together. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> muy bien, muy bien. Gracias, Jacqueline. Sí, eh, bueno, a veces uno ni siquiera descansa, la verdad. Creo que a veces el fin de semana nos toca como que estar ahí haciendo aseo, encargarse de cosas de la casa y así. Entonces, pero hay que descansar cuando se puede, ¿verdad? Hay que aprovecharlo. Creo que llega un punto que uno, en mi, en mi caso al menos, antes me gustaba bastante salir. Todavía me gusta salir, pero no tanto quizás como antes. A veces pienso mejor en estar descansando en la casa, solamente relajarme. Dormir, dormir es una actividad muy bonita para mí ahora. Me gusta bastante. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, guys, uh, thank you for coming, Luis and Josué, Kevin. It's nice to see you again, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, at least, is going to be the last class of the week. So that's very good, right? We don't have classes tomorrow. You guys can uh, have some uh, time off tomorrow from, from classes and then uh, we will see again on Monday so that's good that's very good we can have some rest tomorrow we don't have any any homework I will not assign any homework for you so you can rest so you can have some time off and well for today guys we are going to complete section number three right that's what we need to do because we have um, the section number three and also the midterm exam, basically that is what we need to complete for this week, right? You remember how I told you at the beginning of the week that we need to complete section number three and also the midterm exam. So that's like uh, our assignment for the week. That's all we need to do, right? So yesterday we learned a couple of things about uh, how to ask for favors. Uh, well, basically, this whole section has been about uh, asking for favors. So let me just go back 
over here. See. Sir. Sorry, guys. I'm really tired. I don't know why. Vamos a ver acá. ¿Por dónde nos quedamos? Okay. Bueno. Vamos eh, a ir acá atrás. Deme un segundo. Please bear with me, guys. I'm still... Working on it, I'm still trying to get to the right part. Okay, vamos a ver. Bueno, vamos solamente como a dar una pequeña, un pequeño repaso. We're going to review uh, the information that we learned yesterday really quick. We are not going to uh, take too much time with this because we already know how to do these things. But I just want to review it one more time with you. So... Yesterday, if you can remember, we learned all the different ways that we can ask for a favor. Like, for example, we can say, uh, can you lend me or uh, can I borrow your pencil? And then can you lend me uh, your jacket? And then we also have, is it okay if I use your phone? Do you mind if I use your CD burner? Would it be okay if I picked it up on Friday night? Okay, we have different expressions so we can ask for favors. And we just said that the ones on the top are less formal and the ones at the bottom are more formal, right? Like we have, would you mind if I borrowed your digital camera? Uh, would you mind letting me use your laptop? Okay, vamos a otra vez recordar que dijimos que después de esta expresión de, por ejemplo, do you mind or would you mind? De, si va un verbo, después de eso, el verbo va a ir en gerundio, ¿ok? ¿Se acuerdan de eso? Por ejemplo, acá dice, would you mind letting me use your laptop? ¿Ok? Va a estar en la forma de ING. Igual que acá abajo. Dice, I was wondering if you'd mind lending me your car. ¿Ok? I was wondering if you'd mind lending me your car. Right? Vamos a ver. Ahora quiero que ustedes, eh, bueno, me digan estas eh, oraciones. Creo que no las practicamos tanto como deberíamos. Así que tal vez las podemos practicar un poquito más, solamente para que podamos nosotros eh, reforzar ese conocimiento. ¿Ok? So, let's see. Um, vamos a ver qué tenemos por acá. ¿Qué do we have here? Vamos a ver. Eh, le vamos a preguntar a Dinora. Porque Dinora sé que está ahí. Hola, oh, Dinora. Hello, Dinora. So, can you help me with this? Uh, could you please uh, say uh, this request? Like, in this case, is it okay if I use your phone? Or do you mind if I use your CD burner? Could you please repeat those for me? Okay. Uh, I uh, repeat the question. Correct. Ah, Permítame okay. un segundo. Se lo voy a poner otra vez acá. Para un poco más. Eh, ahí está. Se lo voy a poner en la pantalla para que usted lo pueda ver y quiero que usted me los, me los diga. Quiero que me diga este, estos, eh, todos, desde, desde este, desde el número 3 hacia abajo, por favor. Ah, ok, ok. It is ok if, if I use your phone. Do you mind if I use your CD burner? Could it be ok if I pick up... Oh. Pick out uh, on Friday Friday night. Mm -hmm. Could you mind if I borrow borrow your digital camera? Mm -hmm. Could you mean letting letting me uh, letting me use your laptop? Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, I could borrow some money. Mm -hmm. I was wo wondering if you might lend him. Let me your car. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Dinora. Uh, just a couple of things here. Uh, in this case, we need to uh, pronounce this like, would it be okay? Would it be okay if I picked it up on Friday night? Or would you mind if I borrowed your digital camera? Would you mind letting me use your laptop? 
sería como, de, se lo voy a anotar por acá para que usted lo, lo vaya visualizando y quiero que me lo diga otra vez. Ok. Sería como, así, perdón. Would you mind? Esto es como mind, algo así, ¿verdad? Mind. Ok. Así que vamos a repetirlas otra vez. So, is it okay if I use your phone? Do you mind oh. if I use your CD burner? Ok, I start? Yes, go ahead. Okay. It is okay if, if I use your phone. Do you mind if I use your CD burner? Good. Um, sorry. Good if we okay if I pick a pick um help me please pick up huh? right so it, it is like this would it be okay if I picked it up on Friday uh, pick, pick it up mm -hmm. on Friday night uh -huh. um good good you mind if I borrow your digital camera mm -hmm. Um, could you mind let me use your laptop? I wonder if I could borrow some money. I was wondering if you mind let me let me your car. Lending, lending me your car. Lending me your car. Mm -hmm. Very good. Recuerde solamente de que acá nosotros lo pronunciamos esta palabra como si fuera W al principio. Okay. Mm. Sería would. Would. Good. No, would. W U D. No es con G, sino que es con W. Uh, would. 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 Uh -huh. would you mind if I borrow would your you. digital camera? Would you lend me? Would you? Would you? Would. Would. Would you. Ajá. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Digámoslo la, la última vez, por favor. Um. Todo. Eso de, solamente de esto de acá, lo de would. Ah, ok. Would it be ok if I pick a pick a, um, on Friday night? Would you mind if I borrow your digital camera? Would you mind let me use your laptop? Very good, very good. Oh. Thank you so much, Dinora. Very good job. Thank I you. I liked it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Very good. Ok, solamente quería que repasáramos esta parte porque sé que tal vez a veces en la, en la mente podemos eh, nosotros visualizarlo y lo sabemos qué significa, creo que todos sabemos qué significa, pero quizás ya a la hora de quererlo decir a veces nos puede costar un poquito más, ¿verdad? Y está bien, tenemos que practicar nada más. Así que, ¿alguien más eh, que quiera eh, practicar un poco más? ¿Tenemos alguna duda con esto hasta ahora, guys? Do you have any questions for me? Any concerns? Oh, we have Kevin. We have Kevin. Go ahead. Should I read them um, all of them, or are you going to select some of them? No, no, it's, that's fine. You can go ahead and read all of them. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Can I borrow your pencil? Could you lend me a jacket? Is it okay if I use your phone? Do you mind if I use your CD burner? Would it be okay if I pick it up on Friday night? Would you mind if I borrow your digital camera? Would you mind letting me use your laptop? Mm -hmm. I wonder if I could borrow some money. I was wondering if you'd mind lending me your car. Awesome. Very good job, Kevin. Excellent. Very good. That was perfect. Thank you. Very, very good. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, Kevin. Excelente. Uh, Alguien más? Tenemos alguna, eh, any questions, guys? Anybody else that would like to participate? It always confused me the use of borrow and lend me. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. I, very, very good. All right, so I'm going to try to explain it one more time. I know that it can be confusing, right? But uh, I think that for the most part, we use borrow when we say, can I borrow your pencil? Okay, we have I in this case. And on the other hand, we have, could you lend me a jacket? Okay. So uh, usually we ask, uh, we use lend when we are asking somebody else. Like in this case, could you lend me a jacket? Or could you lend me your car? Or uh, on the other hand, we say, uh, can I borrow your car? Or can I borrow some money? 
uh, can I borrow five dollars, for example? So we use I with borrow, and we use you with lend most of the times. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Very good. I hope that that helps a little bit. If you see at the bottom, we have the same thing again, right? We have, I wonder if I could borrow some money. Okay, I, I could borrow some money. And then on the other hand, we have the other uh, example at the bottom that says, I was wondering if you'd mind lending me your car. Okay, you lend me your car. Okay. Es la forma más fácil de verlo, siento yo. Solamente vamos a acordarnos, vaya, cuando le digamos a alguien, eh, puedes prestarme, utilizamos lend. Cuando queremos decir, puedo tomar prestado, ahí vamos a utilizar borrow. Ok, estamos claros hasta ahí, vamos a ver, ¿alguien más? ¿Alguna otra duda? Aparte de Jacqueline. Any other questions besides that? All right, very good, very, very good. So let me just move on to the next part. Right, creo que eso es lo que nosotros teníamos que aprender el día de ayer. Creo que tal vez ahora con esta pequeña aclaración que hemos hecho, tal vez ya estamos un poco más claros. Eh, espero que pues, no tengamos ningún problema. Solamente tenemos que practicar, guys. Eso, eso es todo, practicar más. And then we have this um, knowledge check, uh, 3.4. It says, uh, complete the following request with models, if clauses, and gerunds. Okay, so it says, you want to borrow your coworkers underwater camera. So then, uh, I think that we checked a couple of things yesterday, uh, checked a couple of these uh, exercises uh, with Franco, I think it was. Like, for example, you have, uh, you want to use your roommate's computer. Then uh, you may ask something like, is it okay if I use uh, your computer? I think that that's what it was. Vamos a ver, acá, acá están las respuestas, ¿verdad? Básicamente tenemos que completar con la parte que hace falta. Aquí tenemos el inicio de la, de la oración. Tenemos que basarnos en, la, eh, en esta oración que tenemos acá. Aquí dice, ¿quieres utilizar la computadora de tu compañero de habitación? Entonces acá ponemos, eh, dice, is it okay if I use your computer? Then we have, you would like for your neighbor to give you a ride to work. And then uh, we have, would you mind? And then right after that, uh, what do we need to, uh, uh, in this case, what do we need to type in? Right after, would you mind? What comes next? What do you guys think? We have given me a right to work, right? Because we have this expression right here. Would you mind? So then right after, we are going to have a verb with the ing form, right? Estamos bien hasta ahí. Es lo que, les hemos, lo que hemos estado viendo hasta ahora. Que después de esta expresión, nosotros vamos a tener un verbo con la forma ing, correcto? So would you mind giving me a right to work? Would you mind... Uh, lending me uh, your jacket, uh, I don't know, things like that. Después tenemos acá, you want a friend to help you move on Saturday. Okay, so that means that we are uh, going to live in a different place, right? Like in a different house. So you want a friend to help you with that. So you can move to a different place, right? So uh, it says, could you help me move on Saturday? And then finally, we have number four. Uh, you would like your aunt to give you a second piece of pie. So then uh, probably because we have a lot of respect for our aunt, we say, I was wondering if you'd mind giving me a second piece of pie. Okay, otra vez lo mismo, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos la expresión uh, de este tipo, como would you mind, or I was wondering if you would mind, eh, vamos a utilizar el verbo con ing, okay? Very good. Esa sería esa parte, guys. Después vamos con la siguiente le lección. That will be lesson number 3.5. We have the objective. It says, by the end of this class, you will develop skills in listening for a specific information, listen to requests, listen to telephone conversations. Uh, so, 
I can remember if we listen to this. I think we did. Okay. Sí, creo que ayer escuchamos esta parte, ¿verdad? Que era acerca de favores. Yo les preguntaba a ustedes qué tipo de favores eh, se estaban pidiendo en, en el video y si la persona estaba de acuerdo o no estaba de acuerdo. Así que esa parte ya la vimos. Entonces nos vamos a saltar esa parte eh, porque no es tan importante. Uh, so then we go to, uh, then we can jump to uh, lesson 3.5, uh, sorry, 3.7. And it says, by the end of this class, you will learn indirect request. Okay. So, uh, so far we have learned how to make request, like direct request, right? Uh, but in this case, we're going to learn how to make indirect requests. We're going to learn how to do that. So let's say that sometimes uh, you want to ask something uh, to someone you do it directly, but so there are some situations when you don't want to ask that person directly, but then uh, you want somebody else uh, to ask that question for you. So that is what we are going to learn today. Vamos a ver por acá. Tenemos nosotros este pequeño video que es acerca de indirect request. Indirect request. Okay. Son, eh... perdón, Josué, quería decir algo. Bueno, vamos a seguir. All right, so we have uh, different kind of sentences, guys. We have statements, like just um, positive statements here. Then we have imperative sentences. Then we have just no questions. And then we have WH questions, right? Cada una de ellas eh, tiene una forma en la cual nosotros la vamos a convertir. Tenemos la oración original eh, en una de estas formas, como una oración positiva, una oración imperativa. Una oración del tipo, una yes, no questions. Una pregunta de sí o no. Y por acá, por último, tenemos una pregunta con una palabra eh, WH word. Right? That's what we call them. Uh, because most of them start with WH. Like when, what, which, where, and all of that. Right? So in this case, uh, we have number one, we have statements. And we have this example. It says... Jeff, Tony is having a party. Okay. What happens if we want to request, uh, if we want to make an indirect request from that sentence? Then we are going to do something like this. Uh, it's going to be something like, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? Okay. We're asking someone to do something for us. Right? Acá dice que le estamos diciendo a Jeff que Tony va a tener una fiesta. Pero en este caso, eh, para hacer una, una petición de forma indirecta, nosotros no le decimos directamente a Jeff eh, acerca de esto que queremos comunicar, sino que lo pedimos a alguien más. Entonces acá es, ¿podrías decirle a Jeff que Tony va a tener una fiesta? ¿Ok? Básicamente solo agregamos esta parte. Could you tell Jeff a Tony is having a party? Lo podemos decir de las dos formas, pero está entre paréntesis. Podemos tanto decir eh, la palabra that o podemos omitirla y en ambos casos tendría eh, el mismo significado y sería válido. ¿Okay? Sería, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? Or, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? So, we are not saying, uh, we are not telling that Uh, to Jeff directly, but we are asking somebody else to do it for us, right? So that's the difference. Estamos claros hasta ahí, guys. Vamos a escuchar una partecita del video nada más. No nos vamos a detener a escucharlo todo, pero solamente vamos a escuchar una parte para reforzar esta, este, la gramática eh, que corresponde a este tema, ¿ok? Indirect requests are. So indirect requests means that you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there, um, and you leave a message for that person. Well, this is what we call an indirect request. So let me present some structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So if we have statements, imperatives, yes and no questions, and WH questions, those will be different whenever we change them to indirect request. Uh, now, I'll be discussing this individually. Uh, and then um, 
we're going to try to make sense of all of them together. The idea is to be able to make uh, to, to take any kind of um, sentence and then change that to a form of indirect request. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus with the first one, with statements. So as we can see, um, statements are quite easy to change, right? We have a statement there, Jeff, Tony's having a party. So that statement, we change it to an indirect request. You call um, maybe uh, maybe Jeff, uh, Jeff the assistant, uh, and uh, you want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you, you, um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right. So it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant. Uh, and then Jeff's assistant will, do, will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff. Uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, and these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist, right? Uh, let me, I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that pretty clear. So how do we change this next statement? Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work. So basically the only thing that we did um, is if you see this is the message, right? And what we did is we just pretty much sort of like have the same thing. We only added, and I'm going to highlight that in red, we only added, could you tell Jeff that, right? Because that, the message is for Jeff once again, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? And I'll highlight that in yellow so you can see. So this was the only thing that we added. And we're going to do the same thing for other kind of statements. Uh, and so let's play around with other kinds of statements real quick. Um, let's see, something related to a party, right? And we want to give the message to Jeff. All right. Um, OK, um, so let me change the size a little bit. So Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So how can we change this to an indirect request or an indirect message? Well, first of all, I mentioned that um, at this point, because everything is directed towards uh, Jeff, uh, we want to say, could you tell Jeff that? And we're simply going to copy this, as you can see. Right? And by the way, uh, something that I forgot to do was I just forgot to add this question mark here. Right? Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's quite simple, as you can see. Right? Uh, let's do one more. Um, what's the message? Well, I want to also give another message to Jeff, and this message will be. All right, um, Tony's going to have a DJ who is going to play all kinds of music. So once again, what is it that we want to do? Well, uh, quite simple. We're going to just borrow this. Could you tell Jeff that? All right. And we're simply going to just uh, get the message. We don't change much on the message at this point, right? It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a DJ who's going to play all kinds of music, right? That's the message that I want to give to uh, to Jeff. All right, guys. Uh, so do we have any questions so regarding change... this? Basically, we just have here a little more, a couple of more examples. So you can see how we make these kind of sentences. Like in this case, we have uh, Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. Okay, so we have a present uh, continuous uh, sentence, but at the end, it's just a positive statement. So basically, it's going to be the same thing, right? So we just uh, add at the beginning, could you tell, and then we add the name of that person that we are going, uh, that we want to leave a message for, 
uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? As you can see, we only have, could you tell? And then uh, uh, the person uh, who the message is going to, and then we can add, in this case, that, or sometimes we can also just not add it, but sometimes, right? Uh, like in this case, could you tell Jeff, uh, Tony is going to invite everyone from work? That would be fine too. And we have the next one that says, Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So then we only add at the beginning, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party? Okay, si se fijan, es una petición que estamos haciendo. Por eso al final ponemos también el question mark. Eso es importante. Porque, como nos dice en el video, estamos como pretendiendo que quizás la persona no está disponible. Eh, que, por ejemplo, estamos queriéndole dejar un mensaje con el recepcionista. Así que vamos a hacer algo ahora. Eh, quiero que ustedes eh, pretendan de que yo soy, digamos, el recepcionista. Y ustedes quieren dejar el mensaje para otra persona. Por ejemplo... Eh, digamos que yo le quiero decir a Kevin, eh, a Kevin, uh, tomorrow we don't have any classes. And then, uh, for example, uh, I could say something like, if Kevin is not available and I want to leave a message for Kevin, then I can say, uh, could you tell Kevin that we don't have classes tomorrow? Okay, just like that. So that is exactly what I want you guys to do. Uh, you can tell me that the message that you're trying to uh, to live, and then uh, you can tell me the the actual message, right? Like I just explained to you in uh, in this example, like uh, Kevin, we don't have any classes tomorrow. Tomorrow, and then uh, could you tell Kevin that we don't have classes tomorrow just like that very easy ahí están las dos oraciones que okay, ahora quiero que ustedes por favor me den algunos ejemplos a mí de esto vamos a ver quién quiere participar a ver qué se les ocurre we need to improvise a little bit Walter? Um, well, in my case, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to resolve the test, but yeah, I'm, I've been trying to use like a main example, like uh, could you tell someone um, using different ways to use it, but uh be honest with you i don't think it is hard to understand that in the way we have to use it is the hard the hard part for me but an example could be would you tell my classmate i we want to have classes tomorrow maybe can you tell my classmates we want to have classes tomorrow? We, we want. Uh huh. Okay, we want. We want to have classes tomorrow. So then that will be we won't have classes tomorrow. Well, we won't have classes tomorrow. Yes. Okay, very good. Y ahí tenemos que eh, esa parte nada más de we want to have ahí no verdad. Solamente we won't, we won't. have classes tomorrow. Uh, because it has a T at the end, want. Right. But it's the same. Uh, okay, we want to Right. Have... There Thank you go. You. You're welcome. Thank you, Walter. Very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Vamos a ver, Kevin. Can we change the idea or is it related to the class? You can change it. That's okay. I mean, I just wanted to give you an example so you guys could see uh, the way that it, it goes. But it can be a different idea. How many idea. sentences? Sorry, uh, how many sentences? As many as you want to. That's fine. Okay. Um, I have one. Would you mind telling Stephen Friday is his day off? Mm -hmm. And the next one is 
could you ask your supervisor for approval in order to get a discount in this item? Mm -hmm. Discount for this item, right? For this item, yeah. Okay, okay very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, could you ask your supervisor for approval in order to get a discount for this item? Very good. And then would you mind telling Stephen, um, Stephen, uh, then a comma maybe, Friday is his day off? Okay, very good, very good. Thank you, I appreciate that, Kevin. Let's see, um, anybody else? Are we good? Do we have any questions, guys? Está bastante fácil, ¿verdad? De hecho, es lo que dice en el video. No, no creo que sea tan difícil. Solamente es de agregarle esta parte al comienzo y luego hacia quién va dirigido el mensaje. ¿Ok? Very easy. Vamos a ver. Entonces, eh, vamos a pasar a la siguiente parte. Si no tenemos ninguna pregunta, vamos a continuar. La siguiente parte es eh, acerca casi que de lo mismo, pero acá es con el siguiente grupo de oraciones. Acabamos de ver las oraciones de forma positiva, right? Just statements. But then uh, we have infinitives, okay? So let me present you the structure for that. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. In this class, we will focus on turning imperatives into indirect requests. Right, so now, guys, we are going to turn imperatives into indirect requests, right? So what is an imperative? Basically, an imperative is when we ask somebody uh, to do something. Like, we are not asking, but we are just saying it. Like, for example, don't be late. Shut up. Uh, stand up. Sit down, okay? Basically, we are just uh, giving an instruction. That is an imperative, right? So we are going to learn how to uh, turn that into a request, an indirect request. Okay, that's what we are going to learn now. We use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Well, let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there, uh, but uh, maybe the assistant or a receptionist answers the phone. So you leave a message with that person. This is what we call an indirect request. So let me present the structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So, for example, if we have statements, which is what we saw in our previous class, uh, then this statements will change in this form, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party or could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Um, so we did a lot of practice with this in our previous lesson. Today we're going to focus or we're going to um, pay close attention to imperatives. Uh, so we're going to have a series of imperatives and we will be changing those to uh, indirect requests using uh, infinitives. If you can see on the screen, we're going to uh, take this imperative. And um, so the imperative is, Jeff, don't be late. Now this, we're going to turn it into an indirect request by using infinitives. And so the way that we will do this is that we will use can you tell plus the object. And then we'll use an infinitive. This infinitive could be in a negative form or it could also be in a positive form. Uh, so let me just quickly point out the structure that we're going to be using. All right, guys. So it's very easy. Again, we only have to, um, in this case, we have an imperative. Just like I mentioned before, this is like an order. In this case, we say, Jeff, don't be late. Okay. We are telling Jeff not to be late. Okay. We're not asking Jeff if he wants to be late. We're not making a request, but we are just giving an order, right? for this one right here on the left. But then if we want to change that into an indirect request, then uh, we are going to have this structure. We're going to use an infinitive, but it's going to be positive or it's going to be negative depending on the original sentence. Like in this case, it says, don't be late. Okay, but in this case, uh, we're going to change it and it's going to say, uh, can you tell Jeff not to be late? Because this one is negative, right? So can you tell Jeff not to be late, right? So uh, very easy. Again, we just have to add this um, um, part at the beginning. And then we add, again, one more time, 
uh, the name of the person or uh, the subject that uh, who the message is going to. And then uh, we use the imperative, like in this case, uh, can you tell Jeff not to be late? That is very important. We are going to use the infinitive. And as you can know, as you probably already know, as you can see, uh, the infinitive, it is the verb and uh, the, uh, in this case, the conjunction to, like not to be late, right? Bueno, vamos a ver por acá eh, un, los ejemplos que nos presentan. Acá nos, acá nos dice la, la, la estructura. Dice, could you tell, puede ser eh, también otro sujeto por acá, en esta parte, puede ser otro. Eh, pero por lo general, como le estamos pidiendo a alguien que le diga a otra persona, por lo general va a ser you. Okay, so could you tell, and then uh, the object, hacia quién va dirigido el mensaje, ok, por eso le decimos el objeto, porque es hacia quién va dirigido. So, could you tell uh, Jeff, and then in this case, uh, the infinitive, which is going to be, uh, like, like in this case, not to be late, ok. Vamos a ver, por aquí adelante tenemos más ejemplos. Ese es el mismo, el que teníamos a, acá. Acá tenemos la, la, el otro ejemplo, dice, Jeff, bring some drinks to the party. I mean, I'm sorry, this, it says, uh, Jeff, bring some drinks for the party. So we are telling Jeff to do this, right? We are not asking, we are giving an order. So, ¿cómo vamos a cambiar esta oración en este caso? Aquí está como una orden. ¿Cómo la vamos a cambiar eh, utilizando la estructura de acá? ¿Cómo sería? Sería, could you tell Jeff, and then, could you tell Jeff not to bring some drinks for the party? Very good, very good. Uh, thank you, Kevin. In this case, um, it's going to be positive because we have this positive uh, statement here. So it's going to be, uh, could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party. Como le estaba mencionando, depende de la oración in, in, original, por así decirlo. Acá en este caso es positiva. Entonces, si lo queremos cambiar, eh, en este caso sería el infinitivo, pero en la forma positiva. ¿Ok? Sería, creo que ahí, ahí lo vamos a ver, de hecho, bueno, quizás lo voy a reproducir el video para que lo puedan ver. Eh, aquí está. Ahí está. Could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? Digamos de que si la oración original dijera algo diferente, como por ejemplo, uh, Jeff, don't bring any drinks for the party. And then in that case, uh, if we want to change it uh, to an indirect request, then we would say something like, could you tell Jeff not to bring some drinks to the party? Okay, in that case, it's going to be different, right? Because the original sentence, uh, it is in the negative form. So that's basically what is going to tell us uh, if it's going to be negative or if it is going to be positive. Estamos claros hasta ahora, guys? Alguna pregunta? Any questions? Any questions? No questions. All right, let's, let's continue. Vamos a ver. Form will use not to and then the verb. If we have a positive form, we will say to and then plus tell, could you tell Jeff to bring. Come so on. Tell the give to Jeff. This is in the form of an imperative. So how do we go about changing this into uh, an indirect request? Well, again, we mentioned we will use could, and then we'll use you. Uh, in this case, we will use the verb tell. The object I mentioned is Jeff. All right. So we will say, could you tell Jeff? And if you notice, this is not in a negative form. So therefore, we will not use not. And we will simply use the infinitive form. Could you, tell, could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? There we go. Um, and this is what I refer to, or this is what we refer to whenever we say that that's an infinitive, right? So um, it, to bring um, or not to, uh, and then the verb, right? So if we have a negative form, we will use not to, and then the verb. If we have a positive form, we will say to, and then plus the verb. That's what we mean by that. So could you tell Jeff? to bring some drinks for the party. And that's how we turn that 
imperative into an indirect request. So let's practice making a series. Okay, um, all right, guys. So he just explained uh, exactly what I just uh, told you. So if the original sentence is a negative sentence, then uh, we're going to have a negative infinitive. But if it is a positive statement, and then it's going to be a positive uh, infinitive as well, right? And then uh, they give us all of these uh, different uh, words, uh, these uh, sentences, so we can practice, right? Uh, you guys want to, you can do that. Uh, we have Jeff, be on time. Jeff, tell your friends that they are invited to the party, okay? So basically, we just need to make uh, an, indir an indirect request using these examples, right? Like, for example, in this case, uh, could you tell Jeff uh, to be on time? Or could you tell uh, Jeff uh, to tell his friends that they are invited to the party? Esa es otra cosa importante que acá, dependiendo de a quién nos estemos dirigiendo, va a cambiar el pronombre posesivo. En este caso le estamos diciendo directamente a Jeff que le diga a sus amigos que están invitados a la fiesta. Pero nos estamos dirigiendo nosotros a él. Pero en cambio, si nosotros le decimos a alguien más, va a depender hacia quién va, va dirigido el mensaje. Por ejemplo, si es para un hombre, sería como, como lo acabo de mencionar, sería, could you tell him uh, to tell his friends that they are invited to the party? O if it is a female, then uh, it would be, uh, could you tell her uh, to invite her friends? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, could you tell her uh, to tell her friends that they are invited to the party. So it's going to be a little different depending on the subject or the uh, the object of this, uh, the sentence in this case. Okay, uh, any questions guys? Uh, any questions at all? Do we have any questions with this part? No, right? Okay, so we can move on to the next part. We're almost done guys, we're almost done. Okay, so we have the next part, basically is the last part, I think. No, well, it's not the last part, but it is almost the the last, uh, almost the final uh, part of this uh, uh, topic. So let me just go back a little bit. So now we are going to continue. We already learned how to make indirect requests uh, for positive statements, also for imperative sentences. And now uh, we are going to learn how to do this for yes, no questions, right? Vamos a ver por acá. Acá tenemos nosotros las preguntas del tipo sí o no. Ya todos sabemos que es en las que la respuesta va a ser un sí o un no. Okay? Like, for example, uh, Sofia, are you free on Friday? Then the answer is going to be uh, yes, I am, or no, I'm not, right? Just like that. So uh, how can we turn that? Uh, question into an indirect request. Very easy. We just have to do almost the same as we did before. Like in this case, uh, can you ask Sophia if she is free on Friday? Okay. Or uh, we also have, could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Okay. Si se fijan acá es un, es un poco diferente, ¿verdad? Acá no es le puedes decir, sino que es le puedes preguntar, porque acá nosotros queremos, estamos haciendo una pregunta, ¿ok? Entonces, por esta parte, eh, cuando la convertimos en una indirect request, then we, we say, uh, can you ask, and then Sofía, in this case, if she is available, on, or if she is free on Friday, fíjense que también vamos a seguir nosotros acá, el mismo tiempo. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos el verbo to be y por acá tenemos el presente simple y por acá es lo mismo. Okay. Could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Acá vamos a tratar de nosotros simplemente eh, memorizar esta estructura. Whether or not. Y luego, she has my number. Aquí estamos preguntando, Sofía, do you have my number? Could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Because we're talking about her, right? It's a third party. I'm uh, sorry, a third person. I apologize. 
it's a third person. So in that case, we have to use has, right? Because we're talking about her. So Sofia, uh, do you have my number? Becomes, would you ask her whether or not she has my number? Bueno, me gustaría hacerles una pregunta a ustedes. Guys, eh, ¿cuál sería la diferencia entre la palabra whether and whether? Perdón, aquí me hizo falta la H. Eh, ¿Creen ustedes que hay alguna diferencia en esto? ¿Cómo las pronunciarían sure. ustedes? Go ahead. Sure, we, have ahead. A, we have a difference. The first one is when you express the time that is doing in a place for example cloudy windy sunny rainy and the other one is uh conjunction if i'm right if i'm not wrong and this is uh expressed in spanish el uno o el otro mm -hmm. or ya sea mm -hmm. so that, that's the difference okay very good very good that is perfect kevin thank you uh is there a difference in the pronunciation We might say those are homophones. Basically, you say weather and weather. Basically, the same. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Very good, Kevin. That is correct. Thank you. So, I just wanted to mention this because I think that this is important because we may be confused sometimes. But basically, they have the same pronunciation. Okay? So, weather and weather. It's the same thing. They are homophones, just like Kevin said. Right? So in this case, uh, could you ask her whether or not she has my number? Y como dijo Kevin, eh, básicamente esta palabra es la que utilizamos como en el español cuando decimos eh, si ya sea que, o sí o que no. Eh, básicamente eso es lo que quiere decir acá. ¿Le podrías preguntar eh, si ella tiene mi número o no? Básicamente esa sería la traducción. Eh, luego, por otra parte... Te podrías preguntar, eh, puedes preguntarle a Sofía si ella está libre el viernes, ok entonces fíjense que para esta parte de las preguntas nosotros lo vamos a hacer de estas dos formas, ambas son válidas ok, both of them are correct vamos a ver Sofía, ¿estás libre el viernes? y hemos convertido eso en una pregunta directa un segundo, chicos ¿puedes preguntarle a Sofía si ella está libre el viernes? Yeah, well, I don't know what is going on with the audio. I don't know if you guys can hear, but I can hear it very little. It's like very low. So let me go back. Bueno, vamos acá a ponerlo rapidito. No, parece que no hay forma, ¿verdad? No sé si ustedes lo pueden escuchar, pero... Ah, ahí está. Well, first of all, we can either ask with can or could, so we won't be polite if we want to say could you, right? you and then in this case we're going to change the verb to ask and then could you ask Jennifer if she has a date for the party all right so what we did was we added could you and then we uh, that follows the verb ask and then that follows uh, the object Jennifer and that follows if Could you ask her? And here is the message that we want to give. If she has a date for the party. Notice that we don't include the auxiliary verb in this kind of question. So that will be one way to put it. Another way could be, could you ask Jennifer whether she has a date for the party. That could be another way to do it. And finally, one uh, last way that we want to learn as well is, could you ask Jennifer, whether or not she has a date for the party. Okay. So on the first one we use if, on the second one we use just the word uh, whether, and then we use whether or not. Uh, and then uh, the message uh, did not change. I'm going to go ahead and color that in green just so you can see that it did not change. Notice that in this case, 
we are no longer given a message but asking a question instead. And so therefore, the verb that we uh, use is no longer tell, but uh, we use the verb ask. So what I'd like for you to do next, I'm going to go ahead and um, write a couple of more questions here. And this time, I would like for you to try them out, see if you can turn those questions into indirect requests. I want you to do it in the three forms that we just um, did at this time. This is no longer. OK, guys, so we have like uh, summarized everything here. So as you can see, we use the word ask because we're uh, the original the sentence is a question. So then we use the verb ask. Then uh, it's going to be the object again. And then we have three options in this part. It can be if, it can also be whether, or it can be whether or not. And then the message here at this part is going to be the same. As you can see it doesn't change. So we have, she has a date for the party. Then she has a date for the party. And then uh, the same thing uh, in the third example, she has a date for the party. So the only thing that changes in this case is going to be uh, this part, like um, what is joining uh, both uh, sentences, if, whether, or whether or not. All three of them are correct. Okay, uh, tenemos alguna pregunta, guys, hasta ahora uh, con esto? Any questions? Are we clear? Any questions at all? No questions, right? All right, so we have the last one, guys. This is going to be the last part uh, for today. Uh, we have indirect request introduced by a question word, right? So we already learned how to make indirect requests with uh, statements, imperatives, just no questions. So now we are moving uh, to the WH questions, right? So like I mentioned before, uh, you guys probably know that WH questions are like w when, what, uh, why, which, all of that, right? So in this case, if you can see, we have uh, Jeff, when does the party start? Or Sophia, what time should I pick you up? Okay, so basically uh, we are asking somebody a question, a WH question. It's not a just no question anymore. Now we have a WH question. So this is, Sophia, eh, a que hora debería recogerte? So then um, let's say that Sophia is not available and I want to leave a message for her. So then I would say something like, could you ask Sofia and then what time I should pick her up? Si se fijan acá, vamos a conservar eh, la, la WH word que teníamos en la pregunta original. Igual de, en, esta, eh, en el ejemplo número uno. Dice, uh, Jeff, when does the party start? And then uh, we say, can you ask Jeff when the party starts? Básicamente, conservamos la palabra que teníamos en la oración original. Y luego el mensaje va a ser eh, en, el, en el tiempo, eh, nuevamente, en el mismo tiempo en el cual está la oración original. Acá es cuando comienza la fiesta. Y por acá también es, es igual. Eh, ¿Puedes preguntarle a Jeff cuándo comienza la fiesta? ¿O puedes preguntarle a Sofía a qué hora debería recogerla? So, basically the same, right? Uh, there is no changes on that part. Okay, so I think that this part uh, should be really, really easy. It's basically the same as the last part that we just uh, learned just a couple of minutes ago. Um, so you, you guys have any questions on this? This was the final part for section number three. And then uh, you guys only have this uh, little exercise here. And then uh, you have to complete the midterm exam. So we have all these different uh, tabs. We have a uh, listening part, uh, then we have this uh, choose the correct word section, then we have put the words in order and all of that. You need to complete all of them, okay? We need to do this uh, at, at least for today, I think, or tomorrow. I'm not really sure, but if you guys can do it today, that would be awesome. But if you guys are not able to do it today, I think that probably uh, you can have until tomorrow, okay? And again, if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any problems with anything, you can uh, let me know. You can send a message in the chat and uh, we can help each other out. Bueno, no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta para ahora, guys. No questions, right? Okay. I have a question. A question. Um, no. Go Basically, ahead. go ahead, Walter. No, 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 no. I was about to say goodbye. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Basically, I was.
Um, or I wanted to ask, we are going to complete the whole um, session or, I mean, section three, right? That is correct, yes. And in that section is the exam. It's not another link or something like that. That is correct, yes. You need to complete section three. And once you complete, once you are done with section three, then uh, you click on next. And that is going to uh, basically uh, take you to the midterm exam. That's right after section three. And then you have the first part, which is the listening. Then you have the second part, which is uh, you, you just need to choose the right word. And you need to complete all of them. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other question, guys? Espero que nos haya quedado claro. Vaya, eh, tienen que completar la sección 3. Una vez que la completen, eh, ustedes le dan a siguiente y eso los va a llevar a ustedes al examen de medio plazo o algo así, creo que se llama. Entonces ustedes completan cada una de esas partes. Tenemos que completarlas. Eh, no creo que les cueste mucho, la verdad, porque solamente es de rellenar, de seleccionar la opción correcta. Entonces, eh, si pueden hacerlo ahora, perfecto. Si no, eh, por favor, intenten hacerlo eh, mañana para que quedemos bien eh, con el avance para esta semana, ¿ok? All right, guys, uh, as well, uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you guys for coming one more time. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here. And I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday, guys. See you on Monday. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.